So hope you can see my screen. Uh, this is basically the same architecture you, you guys uh, saw it last time. So we have st students on the left-hand side. Uh, so right here, and then uh, when they kind of communicate, communicate with the system, when they um, put money on the card, uh, things like that, uh, we discussed that we have uh, like a encryption protocols in place, and and then the load balancer. And we have a bunch of machines here, EC2 instances, which can then uh, scale horizontally. So if in case like in the in the in the beginning of the month or in the end of the month where we have spike because i don't know things happen like for example student, uh, students get uh, their money to pay for for their food so basically they kind of go in uh, in mass and uh, put quite a load on the system and then the data should be stored somewhere and we decided to have a database so for now we're going to keep the database a little bit abstract because yeah, it can be whatever, uh, basically. And I I think we are going to come to databases in the future sessions. And uh, here, I just, I'm using the tool. Uh, somebody asked already on the chat, what what tool do you do we use for um, for drawing those architectural diagrams? So Ashish is a legend. Uh, he just picks up whatever is there installed in the system, like PowerPoint, for example, or Paint. So today you nailed it with Paint. Um, many of us actually use Draw.io. So uh, exactly. So Draw.io, uh, th there is a link on the chat. Uh, thanks for that. And uh, yeah, so this is just uh, running in the browser. There is also like a desktop application, but basically does the same thing. So here you see no black magic is just Chrome. All right, so uh, let's just co convert this diagram a little bit more into, you know, architectural sort of uh, AWS icons. This way, it's going to be a little bit more concise and maybe uh, easier for us than to deal with. So basically, what I did here, uh, I uh, grouped uh, load balancer with uh, with our SSL encryption because this is where the magic happens. Uh, th this is where we terminate client uh, encryption. And then uh, we said in the previous slide that we're going to have like multiple EC2 instances and it will scale automatically. This is actually a notion of auto, uh, auto scaling group. So I just combined it in, into one icon. And then database is database, and nothing changed here, and nothing super, uh, super fancy. As the next step, let's add a VPC. So a VPC will just uh, encapsulate uh, the whole system except of authentication layer. Authentication layer may be, you know, implemented. Maybe we'll come, uh, we'll come to it in the next sessions. Can be implemented with different services. It can be Cognito, for example, from AWS. It can be also third-party services. So there's no particular uh, needs by default to keep it within uh, VPC. All right. So we have three things here in VPC. And as a next step, I just uh, add one availability zone. It's kind of there already. You, you can't really, you know, put virtual machine like you can't put EC2 instance without uh, availability zone. Even if you don't, if you don't care what it is, it's gonna still sit in some availability zone in the end. But let's be explicit for the diagram so we have an availability zone where uh, things scale automatically. As the next step, actually. Uh, because we are, uh, we care about resiliency in this application, we don't want to uh, <laughs> students uh, get starved during their you know lunches and stuff like that when the system is down. So we want to have like a highly available architecture. How we do it? We leverage availability zone. So within the same VPC, we can just uh, span um, span it further to uh, further availability zones, and then our load balancer will just you know send traffic either to one availability zone or the other. And then the database, uh, so here, for example, it's going to be dependent on the uh, on the concrete implementation, on the concrete technology of the database. But um, if we're talking about, so in some particular implementations of databases, we're going to have like a primary instance in one availability zone, and then maybe a read-only instance in the other. Uh, might be some 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 other configurations. So basically, uh, it, de it depends on the database. Uh, but you're gonna have uh, also like replication uh, of the of the database in uh, to availability zones. As the next step, 
uh, now um, we can add private uh, private subnet and private subnet for a, a database is like a natural choice. So there was a question like, when do we use uh, you know private subnets? Why do we need them? We want our databases to be as secure as possible. This is where data, uh, real data of our end users resides, right? So a typical uh, suggestion or typical best practice is to not ha have database exposed to the internet. You always have some layer in between your database and the uh, in the public internet. So for example, if your students communicate with the, uh, with, with, um, uh, with the application uh, over the internet, they will still have like you know load balancers and then EC2 instances and then only those EC2 instances will be allowed to talk to those uh, databases hidden in uh, in private subnet. So this is uh, this is like an important point and this is why you need all those uh, all those you know settings or all those kind of capabilities of VPCs and subnets uh, to to make this working in secure fashion. And then as a next step, uh, the uh, uh, autoscaling group or the EC2, we can put it, for example, for now, just to make it simple, into a public subnet. And a public subnet will have like connection to, uh, to the private subnet where DB, uh, DB resides so that, you know, so the, the data flow will be possible. And at the same time, you can then, uh, you can reach out to those EC2 instances from from external sources. At the same time, it's like it's quite basic architecture, of course, right? So you, uh, if you have some experience already with AWS or networking, you can see uh, quite a lot of things we can improve on it. And as the next iteration, we can also think like uh, what makes our you know payment system uh, system actually working? Do we have like a website? Do we have like some interface? Do we have like uh, you know backend components? And then if we say yes, then we can also decouple it and separate it further so that it's, it doesn't reside on just one particular um, you know, EC2 instance or an auto-scaling group. But you can also put some uh, additional components, like for example, S3 for hosting the website and then uh, backends and endpoints in, uh, in EC2 instances and stuff like that. All right, there are questions in the chat. I think I'll just pick them up uh, in parallel. Yeah, so that's fine. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, it was interesting use case. And there was a question like, can we replicate these stuff? So yes, there are a lot of architectural diagrams which are available and we can put some links in case you want to replicate this stuff on your own. It's possible. I would say instead of using code, start building things piece by piece yourself because code would run at one time and complete everything for you. You won't know what happened. So I would suggest start building things one by one let's create one instance let's then put scaling let's put databases and you can find lots of code and the diagram which alex showed is very very easy to follow not a complicated stuff so we would be happy to help if you need something but i would say don't go for code right now if you are a beginner start with basic steps and then move on to the code stuff if you need to thanks alex yeah maybe i can Good. also mention just one thing about vpc um i just forgot uh, like we have just one VPC here, right? And it's a little bit boring. So uh, the, the one thing you can also do, and this is what's, what's done in production systems. You always have like a production system, which is like one VPC. And then you have something completely different residing in a completely different VPC without any connection to production system, like for development purposes or, you know, testing purposes and stuff like that. So it's basically you take the same setup and replicate it somewhere else. And you put it in a completely different VPC, and you have and you keep things isolated from uh, from one another. Yeah, so isolation is always good. <laughs> isolation is always good. Thank you.